I think you guys know that I like writing shell scripts. We've done this on the channel before, but writing a shell script isn't always easy. I don't write shell scripts often enough to remember all of the syntax, and often there's just stuff I don't know about Bash. It's a pretty broad language and there's a lot of weird gotchas. Well, this is where shell check comes in. I think we've all used stuff like ESLint and other linting tools when writing JavaScript or TypeScript or other languages, and shell check is a linting tool for your shell scripts. So we're gonna take a look at how we can use that in this video. You can find the website at shellcheck.net and you can use whatever package manager your system has to get that installed. Of course, I'm on macOS, so I did a brew install shellcheck and got that installed. Now, no matter what editor you're using, there's likely a shellcheck plugin for your editor. So I'll leave that as your own homework to figure out how to get that set up. Should be pretty straightforward as just installing the plugin, maybe pointing it to the shellcheck binary on your system. But once you do, you can open up a shell script and get to work and shellcheck will help you out. So we're gonna take a look at what shellcheck thinks of one of my shell scripts and we'll make some changes and see how that goes. We are using the bootstrap shell script in my dot files. This is the script that essentially links my dot files into whatever system when I'm doing a fresh install. Now I can give you a quick description of how this works. In my dot files repository, as you can see, I've got a bunch of folders here for the different programs that I wanna configure. Let's take a look inside the ZSH one. As you can see, in here we have a bunch of ZSH files and then we also have this links.prop file and in each one of my folders if I need to symlink a dot file into the right spot there's going to be this links.prop file. So if we cat this out the way this works is one link per line and then the first part of the line is the path within the dot files. So dot files zsh slash rc.zsh. And then after the equal sign, there's the place where it should go, the destination. So in this case, home slash dot zshrc. So that's what this script does. You don't really need to understand the script to follow along here, but if you wanna check it out, it will be linked down below the like button. Okay, let's see what Shellcheck thinks of this script. The way I have NeoVim set up here, we can see in line what errors Shellcheck is noticing. So for example, this first one here, remove space after equal sign if we're trying to assign a value. Well, we're not actually trying to assign a value in this example, but what I'm going to do is break these local variables onto their own lines, and that way it's kind of clear that we're just initializing. Next, we have an if statement here, and it says that we should prefer using the or operator because the dash o flag is not well defined. Well, that's a pretty straightforward fix. So instead of dash o, we can close off our square brackets, use the or operator, and then open a new square bracket, and then we'll do the same thing here. Okay, all right, let's see what's going on here. We're assigning to the current source variable, and we're being told that we should declare and assign separately to avoid masking return values. When I was prepping for this video, this one tripped me up. So we're gonna skip it and come back to it at the end so we can uh, kind of take a look at exactly what this means by re masking return values. But let's move on for now. Here we have a subshell and we're getting the message, quote this to prevent word splitting. Okay, so I think there's no reason why we couldn't do that. I think what this is doing is we're finding the prop value for a particular line. So we cut out the file, grep for the key, cut on the equal sign, yeah, take the second field, and that should just return the value, and we do want that to be a single string, so we can quote that. All right, so this next one says that for loops over find output can be fragile, so we're gonna use a find-exec or a while read loop. Okay, that's interesting and good to know that this can be some fragile syntax, so instead, let's go ahead and do a while read loop. Let's get our find command here. That's pretty straightforward, so we're finding all of these files, we're finding the links.prop files, and let's pipe that to while read link file. And then I think we can just delete this other line. And now we're piping the output of our find command to our while read link file. And since we use the same variable name, we're good to go here. So now this next one, declare and assign separately to avoid masking return values. We saw that above. In this case, I know that this will not cause any problems. So we can declare all these variables up top here by saying source, dest and dir, and then in here we can just remove the local keyword to assign instead. Okay, now this next one is interesting because we're just printing out a success message here. The file already exists, so we're skipping creating it. But the warning is that tilde does not expand in quotes, so we should use dollar sign home. So it thinks that this is a path that we're actually trying to operate on. It's not a path that we're trying to operate on, so we could just leave this. But also, maybe it will be more clear in the output here if we do put home in here. Pretty sure this won't expand in single quotes, so we're gonna move that to double quotes, and then we will actually get dollar sign home. And I'm not sure why I shall check 
doesn't tell me about that. But one thing to note is that Shellcheck, just like ESLint or other tools, you can create a config file, add it to your repo that will control the types of warnings and errors that Shellcheck gives you. So definitely check that out if you want to customize Shellcheck for your own purposes or to match your own or your company's conventions. So we have all of these checks complete, except for this one that we're going to come back to in a second. Let's go ahead and run the file and make sure that it behaves in the same way. Now, I guess we didn't run it ahead of time. So um, you'll just have to take it from me that it runs the same way. But if I run install and bootstrap. All right, so let's see it. As we can see, we skip two files that already exist. We have another file that over already exists here. So I'm just going to say skip and skip and skip. The rest of these have been skipped because they were already linked. So this shell script is running as expected. Let's come back to this here. The actual warning here is that if we declare and assign together, we're masking the return value of this subshell here. If this subshell here returns a non-zero exit code, so there is some kind of error, we're not going to know about that in our script here because we're just assigning directly to our current source variable. Let's see what happens if we take this out. So if we just create our current source variable and then we assign to it separately, that fixes the shell check warning. Now, if we run this script, nothing has failed, but that's because all of these dot files are already installed. I'm going to go ahead and delete the link to my vimrc file. And then let's create a new vimrc file that is not symlinked, but is actually in place there. And we can do that just by creating an empty file with touch vimrc. So now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and run the bootstrap script again. We get installing dot files, so the script begins, but then it just seems to exit suddenly. And this is the behavior I saw when I kind of was preparing for this video, and I was pretty confused by this. Eventually, I figured out that the problem is read link here. Let's take a quick look at the man page for read link, specifically right here. So read link is all about displaying information about the file pointed to by file. So it's about reading the status of a symbolic link. So notice that if the given argument is not a symbolic link, and the F option is not specified, which is just about formatting the output, then read link will print nothing and exit with an error. So what was happening here when we broke this onto two lines is that we actually were masking a non-zero exit code from this script right here. Maybe that is what we want to do in this case, because it allows us to see that the file already exists and then we can set our skip flag to true. So with that knowledge, you may choose to go back to the syntax we had before, where we are intentionally masking this value. If you do want to ignore this particular warning, then what you can do is add a directive above this, kind of like you might do in ESLint. So we can add a comment and we can say shell check disable, and then we need to disable this specific shell check command. If you hover over it, you'll get a little bit more information, specifically this number at the end, 2155. And so what we want to say is disable SC for shell check 2155. And if I save that, now you can see that this command is ignored. Now, a nice convention in this case would be to add another comment. We'll add it above here because we need these two lines to be next to each other. So I'll just add a note here that says I'm ignoring exit one from read link in the case where the file already exists. So with that in place, we should be able to rerun this script. And now you can see we get the intended behavior where file already exists. What do we want to do? And maybe I'm going to say B for backup this time. Skip, skip, skip for those three and we're done. So we've made a couple of nice little changes to our shell script, and now we're more compliant with shell check. We have a safer, more conventional shell script. So this was a quick look at the shell check linting library. If you write a lot of shell scripts, then this can be a real time saver. If you don't write a lot of shell scripts, then this can help you make sure those rare shell scripts are safe and bug free. If you have other tools that you have found helpful in writing good shell scripts, or you just have shell scripts you're proud of and wanna share, definitely throw those in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.